This is Newswatch. Methamphetamine manufacturing has put another person behind bars tonight. Good evening, I'm Caitlin Marshall. Thanks for joining us. 36-year-old Amanda Newland has been sentenced to three years in prison, plus five years of community control. She pleaded guilty last week to one count of illegal manufacture of drugs and illegal assembly or possession of chemicals for the manufacture of drugs. The allegations against Newland stem from an incidents on July 31st and August 14th. The indictment was amended as part of the plea to remove the allegation of the crimes being committed in the vicinity of juveniles. This case was investigated by the Athens Major Crimes Unit. The Athens community is coming together to help a local family affected by a fire. The fire happened early Saturday on Westfield Place. Lily Chandler, her family and pets escaped unharmed. However, the home and car suffered significant damage. The American Red Cross is helping the family and you can help out by donating to the family's GoFundMe page. How's it going, folks? I'm Josh Gregory coming to you with your news watch weather for today. We've got some pretty chilly temperatures, especially considering the temperatures we had last week to start November. We're sitting at 48 degrees right now, mostly cloudy skies. And with that, we've got an interesting mix of mist and rain going on right now, and it's going to feel a little bit cooler with that and eight mile per hour winds coming in from the west. And our pressure is sitting at around 30.7 inches. Now looking at our weather in the area, you'll see 48 degrees is our temperature in Columbus, 47 in Newark, 48 in New Lexington. Like I said, 48 here in Athens. And as we dip down into West Virginia and Ripley, 51 degrees is your temperature over there. Now it's only going to get a, a cooler today and tonight. So by 8 p.m. it's going to be 46 degrees. It's going to be pretty cloudy. Those clouds will start to go away early in the morning at around 4 a.m. But we're going to be sitting around 40 degrees then. So make sure you've got your your coats, your gloves, scarves, hat. You're bundled up if you're traveling to uh, tra traveling from work on those afternoons. So it's going to be pretty chilly tonight. It's only going to get cooler tomorrow. So with that, Caitlin, I'll throw it back to you. Thanks, Josh. A plane crash ignited flames after crashing into an apartment building. It happened just before 3 p.m. today in Akron. It's not known how many people died in the plane, but residents on the ground were reported safe. The plane clipped electrical and telephone wires before crashing into the building and catching fire. Emergency crews were on the scene. The Ohio School Boards Association is calling for more charter school restrictions. The group wants to prohibit charter schools with poor grades or finances from advertising and force charters to disclose graduation rates on advertisements. The Ohio School Board Association also opposed an item passed in the state budget that allows $25 million to go to strong charter schools for building and renovations. An eight-year-old Ohio girl from Pantalaska was caught trying to smoke pot in her elementary school bathroom. Police say a school employee found the eight-year-old trying to light a plastic baggie of marijuana. After being caught, the girl tried to dispose of the pot in a trash can and a toilet. The little girl was suspended and Children's Services officials got involved. Officials are still working to determine the source of the pot. Parkersburg flood wall system is under fire. According to the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, the system is unacceptable because some inspection requirements have not been met. However, city officials say the flood wall is in good shape. Mayor Jimmy Colombo says the city and the Corps have gone back and forth for years over the requirement. The city is required to periodically test all flood wall gates, including one that would cause major traffic concerns. Ohio's Marietta College will be getting a new president next year. Today, President Joseph Bruno said he will complete his term of service in May 2016. In the coming weeks, the Board of Trustees will announce a plan for identifying an interim president. Board of Trustees Chair George Fenton said Bruno invested in enrollment management infrastructure to increase revenue through improved recruitment and enrollment processes. Bruno said he was proud of the changes he's been a part of. 
West Virginia has received another failing grade, this time for government transparency and accountability. This year, the state's score dropped to a D from a D plus last year. The assessment gave failing grades to 10 other states. Only three states earned higher than a D plus. The state has also received failing grades for public access to information, political financing, electoral oversight, and judicial accountability. A Kentucky city is considering a needle exchange program. Health Department Executive Director Judy Mattingly says the program would allow those in Frankfurt participating to remain anonymous using a number identif identification. Health officials would supply enough clean needles for someone to get through a week without reusing. The program would operate one day a week from the county's mobile command center, allowing the program to move to various locations in the county. And the future of Kentucky's health insurance exchange and Medicaid programs is still unclear. Republican Governor-elect Matt Bevin has promised to eliminate Connect, the state-based exchange program. More than 100,000 people purchase private health insurance plans with the help of federal subsidies through Connect. Bevin says he will also scale back Kentucky's Medicaid program, which was expanded to cover an additional 400,000 people under the Federal Affordable Care Act. Coming up next on Newswatch, Republican presidential candidates are gearing up for tonight's debate. It should not have taken this much, and it is disgusting and vile that we find ourselves in the place that we do. That story out of Missouri, still ahead. I decided to do a planned gift because I want to ensure that PBS will be around for my grandchildren and hopefully great-grandchildren. I would hope that others, when doing their estate planning, would include their PBS station. My PBS station is part of my community. That's something I really value. Ohio University students really have a huge sense of pride in our campus, in our school, and in our education. People don't come to Ohio just to go to college. They come here to become a Bobcat. It's a really unique atmosphere. Bobcat pride is having that natural camaraderie. Bobcats are just happy to be Bobcats. My favorite time of year at Ohio has to be homecoming. When the alumni come back, you can see that the love of this university doesn't fade. Once you're a Bobcat, you're always a Bobcat. The student body here at Ohio University absolutely is a family. The students support one another. You become this unit, this big, friendly family unit. There's this connectedness. You feel a part of something. Driving in on the highway and just seeing the red bricks and the trees again, it's just like coming back home. There's great students, great professors. You just walk around campus and think, oh my gosh, I can't believe I go here. I feel like I matter in the community and I feel like I matter here at Ohio University. It's home. Athens is home. My professors really care. They care about my grades, they care about my opportunities, they care about my experiences, they want me to succeed. They give those opportunities to the students. My professors have been extremely approachable. Literally, their door is always open. You can go to them with pretty much anything. Everyone knows your first and your last name when you sit in the classroom. I really never feel like I'm being talked down to or just being taught material. I always feel like I'm having a conversation. And they want to share those opportunities and those experiences with us. Most of the GOP presidential candidates are hoping to make a mark in a constantly shifting field at tonight's fourth Republican debate in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. But fewer candidates, only eight, made the cut for the primetime stage. Emily Schmidt has more from Washington on tonight's lineup. It's good to see you, gentlemen. This is what the top of the Republican field looked like during the first GOP debate back in August. Things have changed. Scott Walker dropped out. Carly Fiorina moved up. And Chris Christie and Mike Huckabee are headed to Tuesday's undercard debate on Fox Business Network. This is a strange election, isn't it? Donald Trump is still stage center, leading the group, but with less breathing room. The latest CNN ORC poll of Iowa shows him with 25% support. Ben Carson, two points behind. Marco Rubio at 13 percent, high enough to get Trump's attention in a series of tweets calling Rubio a total lightweight, a highly overrated politician. 
fourth in the poll, Jeb Bush is looking to recharge his performance with this just released ad. My record of government, I think, shows the path of what could happen in Washington. Most of the candidates are spending hours before the Milwaukee, Wisconsin debate out of the public eye, with the exception of Rand Paul talking about charter schools. If the school in your neighborhood's not good, maybe a, a, having the choice to go to another school ought to be your ought to be your opportunity and your choice. And John Kasich shooting baskets with the Milwaukee Bucks. The Bucks made the playoffs this year. So we're like Kasich, he's going to take this whole people, not just to six games, but he's going to win it in seven. A sports analogy getting its test when the basketball arena moves to the political one. In Washington, I'm Emily Schmidt reporting. That debate will air tonight on Fox Business Network. The top eight GOP frontrunners will start at 9 o'clock. The University of Missouri student whose hunger strike ended with the resignation of the university's president is celebrating the news. As his mother tells Betsy Webster, she is also happy about the resignation and proud of her son. By nightfall, Jonathan Butler was trying to turn away from all the attention and towards his family, visiting from Omaha. He was just somebody in the right place with the right amount of courage. There's so much struggle on campus. Butler became the face of a much larger movement that actually started with 11 people who flanked him on stage today after the president's resignation. After months of group letters and meetings and forums failed to make headway, his hunger strike took things to the next level. By Sunday, the football team had joined in, refusing to play until his strike ended, putting a million dollars on the line. It should not have taken this much, and it is disgusting and vile that we find ourselves in the place that we do. His mother says, as a mother, she was concerned for his health, but not surprised he took such a drastic step. We're in ministry, and we do community service as part of what we do. And so my children have been raised in that environment to say to always uh, speak for those who have no voice and to do what's best for others. Eventually, there were many more raising their voices, for making campus a safe space for people of color. Every mother wants their child to be safe, and I'm thankful that Jonathan was brave. I don't know if I could have done it. That was Betsy Webster reporting. There is still no word on when a new president or chancellor of the University of Missouri will be appointed. Myanmar's ruling party, the military-backed USDP, has conceded defeat in the country's elections, marking what's expected to be a major victory for the opposition NLD party led by Aung San Suu Kyi. Hundreds of thousands of people have taken to the streets to celebrate after millions of voters went to the polls. The result will no doubt have a major impact on the country, which was under military rule for decades. Russia's anti-doping agency held a news conference in response to allegations of a state-sponsored doping program in Russian track and field. The global agency in charge of keeping sports free of performance-enhancing drugs has accused Russia of engaging in a vast system, systematic state-sponsored doping program. There are huge ramifications. Nikita Kamev, the head of Russia's anti-doping agency, says his country is working to address the problems. It's been really hard um, to know, like to go training every day, knowing that um, you've been robbed of an Olympic gold medal. The IAAF let him compete in the first place when he should have been banned. We can go back and change the results, but you can't go back and get those moments of people standing on podium. If Russia is not in Rio, I think the reputation of athletics will actually be enhanced. I think they'll act quickly to um, consider the recommendations of the independent committee. The announcement of the vote results of Parliament, the celebration of the Parliament after, re after the results are called. After a win in regional elections in November, separatist parties in Spain's Catalonia Regional Parliament passed a motion on Monday to start the process of breaking away from Spain. The motion was passed by a vote of 72 in favor to 63 against. The Spanish Prime Minister quickly reacted by announcing that he would take the issue to the Constitutional Court. Wall Street ended modestly higher after a choppy session today as gains in consumer discretionary stocks offset a drop in Apple. Here's a look at stocks of local interest.
This past month, a study said bacon could be cancerous. Now meat eaters might have even more to worry about. That story's still ahead. Partly sunny skies, cooler temperatures, and in even a chance of rain and thunderstorms tomorrow. I've got more details on my extended forecast. Stay tuned. I support one student in college with a scholarship. Just the way I want to pass on a legacy of education, I would like to pass PBS on to the next generation. I like to think that PBS is concerned with our soul. If your soul is in the right place, you're in giving back. Ohio University students really have a huge sense of pride in our campus, in our school, and in our education. People don't come to Ohio just to go to college. They come here to become a Bobcat. It's a really unique atmosphere. Bobcat pride is having that natural camaraderie. Bobcats are just happy to be Bobcats. My favorite time of year at Ohio has to be homecoming. When the alumni come back, you can see that the love of this university doesn't fade. Once you're a Bobcat, you're always a Bobcat. The student body here at Ohio University absolutely is a family. The students support one another. You become this unit, this big, friendly family unit. There's this connectedness. You feel a part of something. Driving in on the highway and just seeing the red bricks and the trees again, it's just like coming back home. There's great students, great professors. You just walk around campus and think, oh my gosh, I can't believe I go here. I feel like I matter in the community and I feel like I matter here at Ohio University. It's home, Athens is home. My professors really care. They care about my grades, they care about my opportunities, they care about my experiences, they want me to succeed. They give those opportunities to the students. My professors have been extremely approachable. Literally, their door is always open. You can go to them with pretty much anything. Everyone knows your first and your last name and where you sit in the classroom. I really never feel like I'm being talked down to or just being taught material. I always feel like I'm having a conversation. And they want to share those opportunities and those experiences with us. How's it going folks? Josh Gregory here with your extended forecast. Now we got 48 degree temperatures right now, uh, sitting at mostly, mostly cloudy skies. Um, we got a little bit of moisture in those clouds, so we're seeing a little bit of that mist coming into our area and it's going to feel a little cooler. We've got some eight mile per hour winds coming in from the west, so it's going to feel a little bit cooler. Probably around 44 degrees is what you're feeling. Now looking at our temperatures around the area, you'll see up north up in our northern area, 48 degrees and then we've got 47 in Newark. We've got 40. We've got 48 in Jackson, 51 down in Ripley. That's the warmest it's going to get down in uh, West Virginia. Excuse me. Now as we look overnight, it's going to get a lot cooler. We've got some 30 upper 30 temperatures up here in our northern area and as as we get down into our southeastern area, we've got low 42, uh, 40 temperatures uh, for that. And so going into tomorrow, pretty consistent temperatures throughout. We've got 59 in New Lex, 63 in Marietta, 64 dipping into West Virginia. That's the warmest it's going to get again in that area. So looking at our almanac, you'll see 50 degrees is our temperature today. And that is a little bit cooler than our normal, but our low is a little bit higher than our average of 37 degrees. Now take a look at this, 75 degrees. Can you imagine, uh, you know, warm temperatures like this? That's, that's pretty much what we were feeling last week. 22 degrees, that's our record low. Again, very cool temperatures to be feeling right about now. And then keep in mind, it's going to get a lot cool, or excuse me, it's going to get a lot darker pretty early on. So keep that in mind on your way home from work. Now here is something very interesting to look at. You've got a storm system right here to our in our west that will be coming in our area right now. What we're seeing right here with our little bit of mist and rain is this storm system that's going to be going east and out of our area. But look at this. This storm system, this high pressure system is going to pull it. It's going to push it, excuse me, into our area. And that's something we are going to see uh, coming into tomorrow and um, Thursday morning. That's we're going to see a little bit of rain coming in from that. So 40 degrees is our temperature tonight. Pretty cool cloudy temperatures. It's going to feel pretty chilly. So if you're out and about, then be sure to have your coats, gloves and scarves because it's going to be pretty chilly. And now going into the bus stop tomorrow, 40 degrees again. Make sure the kids are bundled up. It's going to feel chilly, even though it's going to be mostly sunny. Uh, hats, gloves, coats, the works. They're going to need it all. And but you're going to want to lose those coats later on. Right around noon, it's going to get 
57 degrees and then by 4 p.m. we're going to hit our high uh, 60 degrees. It's going to that's when we're going to see those uh, warmer temperatures coming about, but we are going to see some rain later on in our night starting around 4 p.m. It's going to get pretty cloudy and that's when we can see some of those rains. So looking in our extended 60 degrees, like I said, is the high tomorrow, but we got an 80% chance of rain coming in our area later on that night and that's going to continue on to Thursday. 30% chance with that 62 degrees though, so getting a little warmer, but it's going to get a lot cooler looking at Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's going to get very cool. We want Friday night football. We've got 32 degrees listed at that, so bundled up and then looking at our work week Monday 56 and we're going to see some rain Tuesday 58 degrees. So Caitlin back to you. Thanks, Josh. Two weeks ago, the World Health Organization declared processed meat a carcinogen. Now a new study links grilled and barbecued meat to kidney cancer. Jennifer Whalen explains in today's Health Minute. A warning for those who love pan-fried meats or backyard barbecues with lots of steak. A new study in the Journal of Cancer Research links higher meat consumption with a higher risk of kidney cancer. Researchers examined the diets and genetic information of kidney cancer patients and then compared them with healthy men and women. They found the kidney cancer patients ate more meat, both red and white, than the healthy people. Specifically, they looked at meat cooked over an open flame, which health experts say can create carcinogens. They also found a certain genetic mutation that made the patients more vulnerable to kidney cancer, suggesting genetics may play a role. Some things to keep in mind, the research only looked at the most common type of kidney cancer, renal cell carcinoma. Researchers add people should not stop eating meat, just eat meat in moderation and don't burn it. For today's Health Minute, I'm Jennifer Whalen. Now this comes just weeks after researchers said that bacon, hot dogs and other processed red meat can also lead to other forms of cancer. Justin, over to you. Good evening, everyone. I'm Justin Holbrock. Today, Ohio softball released its schedule for the upcoming season, and I'll be bringing you some of the big-name teams that the Bobcats will be playing. And tonight at 8, the Ohio football team takes on Kent State with the Bobcats looking to snap their three-game losing streak. We'll be live from Peden Stadium with a preview in just a few minutes when Newswatch returns. And stay tuned to WOUB. Here's a look at what's coming up tonight on your public television station. daughter is named June Elizabeth, but I call her Junebug. My hope is to teach her about kindness and about the love of animals and nature. I want Junebug to have the same opportunities I had by watching PBS. My husband and I feel so strongly about our PBS station that we've included them in our estate plan. PBS is part of our values and we want to pass it on to the next generation. Ohio University students really have a huge sense of pride in our campus, in our school, and in our education. People don't come to Ohio just to go to college. They come here to become a Bobcat. It's a really unique atmosphere. Bobcat pride is having that natural camaraderie. Bobcats are just happy to be Bobcats. My favorite time of year at Ohio has to be homecoming. When the alumni come back, you can see that the love of this university doesn't fade. Once you're a Bobcat, you're always a Bobcat. The student body here at Ohio University absolutely is a family. The students support one another. You become this unit, this big, friendly family unit. There's this connectedness. You feel a part of something. Driving in on the highway and just seeing the red bricks and the trees again, it's just like coming back home. There's great students, great professors. You just walk around campus and think, oh my gosh, I can't believe I go here. I feel like I matter in the community and I feel like I matter here at Ohio University. It's home. Athens is home. My professors really care. They care about my grades, they care about my opportunities, they care about my experiences, they want me to succeed. They give those opportunities to the students. My professors have been extremely approachable. Literally, their door is always open. You can go to them with pretty much anything. Everyone knows your first and your last name and where you sit in the classroom. I really never feel like I'm being talked down to or just being taught material. I always feel like I'm having a conversation. And they want to share those opportunities and those experiences with us.
Welcome back everyone, I'm Justin Holbrock. The Ohio Bobcats have another primetime game tonight. Tonight, they're going to play against Kent State. Now the Bobcats, they've lost three in a row, so this should be an exciting game for them. One thing to expect for Ohio is that Quentin Poling will be back at the linebacker position. He's finally back after being sidelined because of an injury for the past three weeks. Offensively, the Cats will be tested by the Kent State Flashes. Kent State is ranked second in rush defense and third in pass defense in the MAC. Ohio could utilize A.J. Olette and Daz Patterson more as slot receivers to give Vic some running room. But Darius Vic did some post, did some post, some stellar numbers against Bowling Green last week, especially on the scramble. Sebastian Smith will look to remain hot against Kent State. He was shaken up a bit, but he's definitely going to return. Smith makes those big plays look easy on third down, and he'll look to do more of the same this week. It's primetime action, though, so absolutely anything is possible. If Ohio wins this game, they will be bowl eligible. And tonight's game will be on ESPNU at 8 o'clock. And speaking of football, last, na last night's Monday night game pitted two sub-500 teams against each other in the Chicago Bears and San Diego Chargers. Chicago trailed 19-7 midway through the third quarter, and it looked like the Bears were on their way to losing their third straight game. Jay Cutler responded by leading his team on a 15-play, 8-minute drive capped off by a touchdown from Martellus Bennett. But it was Chicago's other tight end that stole the show. With just over three minutes left and the Bearcats trailing by five, Zach Miller pulled in a one-handed touchdown catch that put his team up 22-19, and that would stand as the final. Even better was the fact that Cutler became the new franchise leader in touchdown passes with that score. The Bears are now 3-5, while San Diego is 2-7. And, and in other NFL news, Cleveland Browns head coach Mike Pettin announced his starting quarterback for the week. Pettin said that today, if Josh McCown is healthy, he will get the start over Johnny Manziel for their game against the Steelers. McCown missed last week's game against the Bengals due to injured ribs. And sticking with Cleveland, the Cavaliers have been on a tear ever since losing their season opener to the Chicago Bulls. Since that game two weeks ago, the Cavs have won six straight, scoring 100 or more points in five of those six games. Cleveland looks to keep that going tonight when they take on the Utah Jazz at home in less than 10 minutes from now. And the Columbus Blue Jackets will also be playing tonight when they take on the Vancouver Canucks. The Blue Jackets have yet to win a home game this year, losing all five of the games they've hosted. The Canucks are one point behind the Los Angeles Kings for first place in the Pacific Division, while the Blue Jackets only have four wins and 11 losses through the first month of the season. Today, the Ohio softball team released its schedule for the upcoming season, which includes games against five teams from last year's NCAA tournament. The Bobcats will take on two teams in the SEC, two in the Big Ten, and one in the Big 12 when they travel to Lubbock, Texas for the Texas Tech Invitational. Plus, Kentucky and Ohio State will travel to Athens to take on the Bobcats. But Ohio's first home game is March 16th against Wright State. And that's all the sports for right now. Caitlin, back to you. Thanks, Josh. Some people have weird hobbies, like this dental hygienist who is also a licensed trapper. She was called out to a mall parking lot in Houston Saturday to capture this big fella who earned nickname Godzilla. She says it took a while to wrangle the 12-foot, 800-pound gator. One last look at weather. We've got 40 degrees temperatures tonight. That's going to be our low. Cloudy, light wind, so it might be a, feel a little bit cooler with those cloudy skies, and that's something that will continue into tomorrow. 60 degrees is our high, so make sure you go out and enjoy that. Mostly sunny skies because that's going to go away around 4 p.m. when we see rain and maybe a potential thunderstorm. So looking at our extended forecast, Looking at our extended forecast, we've got 60 degrees tonight, but we've got those chances of rain. Going into the weekend, we've got a cool down a little bit. 46 is our high on Saturday, and going into the work week, 56 on Monday, and 30, 30 degree or 30% 30 chance of rain on Tuesday. All right, thanks, Josh. And that does it for our broadcast this evening. Thanks for watching. I'm Caitlin Marshall. Stay tuned for the PBS NewsHour coming up next. And remember, you can find the latest news anytime online at woub.org. Have a great night. decided to do a planned gift because I want to ensure that PBS will be around for my grandchildren and hopefully great-grandchildren. I would hope that others, when doing their estate planning, would include their PBS station.
My PBS station is part of my community. That's something I really value.